So a company called IME3D kindly approached me asking whether I'll be interested to review this product called the X Kit. So basically what this is for is mainly for children who are into robotics and coding and etc. where the idea comes with you could actually print a 3D print all the components and customize it. So the, the options are phenomenally vast of what you can achieve. And this X kit mainly contains the main body uh, that actually functions differently based on the app, how you program it. And it comes along with an extra option. So you can buy a 3D printer um, and then you can print the components as you program it and so on. So it's basically a really good idea for kids who really want to learn into robotics. So I thought like since my channel, um, many of my viewers relate to that, it was one of those offers I couldn't refuse. So here it goes people, let's actually get into the details of it. But before we do that, they also kindly sent me some of the already print out uh, units here. So the first one I can see has quite a lot of components, very good quality 3D printout by the way. So I guess it's these, uh, this is called the Force Space Rover, so I look forward to assemble them. Uh, the next one looks like a racing car indeed, so I believe this is the go-kart model. Uh, the third one is rather simple and I can see the dinosaur head here, so I think this one is quite difficult to pronounce, so I'll try it, which is the Paracel Lolophus. I hope I got that right. I'm sure your kids actually got that one. Um, and the fourth one looks like a dragonfly. And I'm pretty sure it is because it has two wings. And I actually saw it from the app. And lastly, uh, this one looks quite popular actually. This one is the same one as this one. And the name of this character is called Fleary Dragon. Okay, so enough said, let's get into the unboxing of this model. So here it goes. All right, so we've got the quick guidebook. Uh, so these were actually just describing what each, um, just a quick overview basically, of what these components means. And we got this rather, wow, a large map. On the back side, I'm sure this is actually designed for the um, robot to follow the black lines. You know, so this line actually continues on. So it's quite big to show you what exactly all of this is going on. And you've got this um, sort of mountain territorial kind of thing and the road and so on. So this is the main body, the brain. And if you look carefully, there's just all these codes. So I think this will be very helpful um, for you to connect and this is basically a quick instruction, isn't it? A guideline for the codes. Um, that's how it looks. Play and stop, pretty much a universal code. We got the uh, charging port, and this is for the data transfer and power on. These are the mainly for the wheels. So that's how it rolls. Also, there's this sort of um, wheel here, but it could also be a sensor. I'm not 100% sure. Now, we got some other extra sort of um, very good quality other components that you can attach to. And this is kind of rather complicated, but I'm sure we'll, it'll be straightforward once we figure out and all these um, blocks like um, nails, should we say? Different colors, very useful. I'm sure you could use it for, you know, various purpose. And also if you lose it, there's plenty of spares that you can actually reuse. The also the regular USB uh, micro USB charger. Now this one I'm quite familiar with. This is the um, distance sensor thing. So you actually attach it to the actual main body and I'm sure it will actually detect the distance. And I think this one looks like a sounder. Um, correct me wrong, but I think this is a sounder. We'll find out anyway, later on. We've got four different wheels with the tire on with different sizes. And lastly, I think these are motors. Yeah, so these actually detach to each other while also connected. Oh, it's not connected actually. So it's like a um, wires and we all know this clip is essential clip 
for robotics use or any uh, mechanical side of use and it's very easy to attach and detach so there are four components here and i'm sure these could be attached to i think it's most likely here anyhow so that there's so many different options that we could go for but let's focus on the already printed out 3d models shall we so here it goes so we tried to build the um, most difficult to pronounce but the easiest to assemble called the paris of us I hope that pronounced it right but um, before we get into the building instructions uh, just so you know there's a printing option as well so it will if you have a 3d printer you just need to press print um, but before that we got this design page which is very interesting because if you click on all these things you can customize the head and also the components here but let's try the head here so if I were to put the head yeah, so you could all do all these 3D and the app is so well designed that you can actually zoom in and out and um, you actually feel like you're actually touching the actual 3D models and, and so on. So that's pretty much the design. I just want to highlight for you. So this is just a quick look and also the coding as well. But if you go to the building instruction uh, page, it's pretty straightforward. So you just need to check whether you have all these components so we've got all the 3d printouts here but also on top of that it also shows that you need those uh, these things so you can zoom in to see what other nails or joints that you need so I got these two here from the X kit and the uh, and the wheel and last we got the uh, the main uh, body as well. So this is the first stage and then next it actually shows you how to do the next one. So attach the wheel, the main body on both end and then attach the head, the arms and the tail. So we built the first model of the Parasaur Lofus and um, I actually had an option of putting the 3D wheels with the rubber on it but i just might as well just put the original because that's actually properly built um, but you do have that option but anyhow if you go to the code there are different options on the blocking code there's three things you could do waddling uh, patrol and waddling um, option for its actual so it actually detects certain areas as well but for the sake of demonstration this will basically um, because it has the sensor on the bottom as you can see it will move in within the uh, black boundaries so as you can see it's trying to there you go so it avoids the black line as the maximum uh, you know demise within the territory so it, once it detects it will just go forward yeah so that's quite cool look at that so it's actually knowing because of the sensor that's on the bottom of it trying to not cross over that line. So we set up the waddling, which was already programmed here. So I have actually uploaded onto the actual main machine. So let's see how it works. Here it goes. That's cool. Okay, better avoid. Okay, so it's actually, oops, sorry. That is quite cool. Okay, so let's stop you there. Just trying to give you the main main surface so it's actually moving so not only you can actually use those pre-programmed coding or whatever you want to call it but you can manually control this one ask it to go forward there you go so forward and backward so you can manually control and also you can actually do a bit of a spinner as well okay so you've got a lot of different options you could play around with. Um, you could do manual control, also the tracer as well, and um, protection, follower, avoider, winner, and so on. Now what we have here is a model called for Space Rover. This took me a while to build because it has a lot of components as you can see. And at the same time, the outcome of it is that it looks really cool. Uh, you can see the beauty of mechanical concept and all the efforts that has put in all together. And I just love the way how the 3D printer came out, even though it's the same part, different color, it somehow it goes well. We've got this 
like a pink blue and pink and a green and orange and it looks really nice i guess that's the beauty of using 3d printer and um yeah and also reminds me of the transformer slash vector now talking about vector robot size comparison is much bigger than vector and it looks cooler than vector in some way but enough said let's actually try out on the default coding that is available from the app That's quite cool, isn't it? So imagine you can actually program this and then you could do more. And Vector seems to be quite pleased with that movement. Now, this is one of my favorite, which is the Fury Dragon. So I already applied the uh, code on it. So let's get on with it. That's quite cool, isn't it? See all the mechanics working actually that's a bit loosened um, maybe that's why it's actually circling around but i could attach that again so we've got the butterfly here so let's see how that works <laughs> that's quite cool uh, i just think that colors are really beautiful aren't they so i better put it back before i actually fall off the desk but um yeah these are the basics um movement that you could program and other things you can do as well for code coding and so on now we've got the go kart option which is relatively straightforward to build and um the one that we could actually try out is the uh the rush so this will be the speed up in straight line and then uh with a flashlight and then brakes and top speed and turn around and so on so let's try that as well That's quite cool. So it's actually staying within the size of the table, which is very good. Well done. So my favorite part of this whole experience was actually building each models. My favorite was actually the most complicated, which is the four space rover. Every time I put all these components together, I was wondering who actually managed to come up with all this design. It was just amazing. Um, I do love the finish, uh, the color, the hue of each 3D model. And I actually want to thank uh, the company IMA 3D to actually providing me five or six different models so that I could demonstrate you guys very quickly how each um, model works and how it looks and so on. And um, also, I, I can see that this could be a very good gift for kids who are uh, possibly the future robotic engineers or who are really into robotics and so on. And I'm sure a lot of schools nowadays actually teach coding, like when I was a kid, um, most of the schools were teaching MS-DOS how to start using computer, the basics of the computer software and so on. So um, I think most parents should look into this XKit model and also look into getting the 3D um, printout printer as well to, you know, those two joys, double joys of 3D printing and also the coding uh, with the building robotics and so on. So um, yeah, I hope this video actually explain how this whole thing works. But if you have any queries, please do comment below. And thank you very much for watching this video. This is LJB Tech. All the best. Bye bye.